Beyond the wall, or the lands north of the wall, a vast and mysterious place that we've actually seen a lot of. I'll be filling in some details of some of the more iconic locations in the series. The general history is something I'm sure a lot of you guys have heard of over and over, so I won't bore you with it by talking about it for too long. 8,000 years before the start of the series, the Others, or White Walkers, attacked and were eventually defeated by the combined effort of the First Man and Children of the Forest. The Wall and Night's Watch had to be built to keep that from happening again. Some of the Children of the Forest, Giants, and the First Men were essentially trapped on the other side of the Wall. The First Men north of the Wall began calling themselves the Free Folk, while the rest of Westeros began calling them Wildlings. They remained very primitive and barbaric. That was a quick summary, right? Heading north of Castle Black is one of the small wilding villages called White Tree. This place most likely has the biggest weirwood tree in the series and is just above the village. The tree's trunk is 8 feet wide so you can imagine this weirwood is no joke. White Tree isn't the closest village to the wall since Jon Snow and his brothers pass through three other abandoned towns before stopping here. In the books, this is where Sam and Gilly are saved by cold hands. If you guys remember Craster from the early seasons, his mom was actually from White Tree while his father was a ranger from the Night's Watch. Who's this little girl? You're prettier than half my daughters. You got a nice wet twat between your legs. What's your name? Jon Snow. Snow. Now listen to me, bastard. All you lot from south of the wall, you southerners. But now you're in the north. The real north. Crasher's Keep is just a little further up north. While most wildlings hate the Brothers of the Night's Watch, Craster has this weird relationship with them. He was this creepy, unlikable guy who married his daughters and sacrificed his sons to the others. He acted like he didn't like the brothers all that much, but still proved to be a very valuable ally for them, and his home a sort of base. Any man lays a hand on one of my wives, he loses the hand. And I see this one staring too long. I might just gouge his eyes out. Your roof, your rules. It makes sense why he treats his allies so poorly since his ranger father left his mother before he was even born and when she tried to bring him to Castle Black, they threw her out. Crasher's Keep is within the haunted forest along with White Tree. Crasher's Keep and White Tree's names are kind of obvious where they come from but the origin of the haunted forest's name is still unknown. This forest is massive and provides a ton of cover for the wildlings so it's one of the many responsibilities of the Night's Watch to cut down the trees that grow too close to the wall in order to have a clear view of tax. A little further up within the haunted forest is the Fist of the First Men. It's a huge stone hill that the First Men built up as a sort of defensive fortress. Game of Thrones did have some scenes with this landmark, but since they didn't put much effort in making it an iconic set, I'm sure a lot of you guys barely noticed. The Fist of the First Men! Think of how old this place is! Before the Targaryens defeated the Andals, before the Andals took Westeros from the First Men... Before I die, please. Stop talking. And I don't blame the show creators for this. Why blow your budget on a location that won't be used much? This primitive fortress had stone walls put up on the top of the hill that's currently in rough shape. This is where the Night's Watch found the dragonglass that was used by Sam against the White Walker. That was used by Sam against the White Walker. Right by the fist of the first men is a river called Milkwater. Not the most interesting thing to talk about, aside from it being the place where past kings and important wildling figures are buried by. The last location I'm going to talk about in the Haunted Forest is a Three-Eyed Raven's hideout. It's just east of the Fist of the First Men and north of Crasher's Keep. The hideout is a very complex cavern that we get to learn about when Bran works to explore the place where he'll learn to be a Greenseer. Under this weirwood tree atop a hill is a system of caves. Within these caves is a Three-Eyed Raven who has attached himself to his weirwood throne in order to stay alive. Brendan Rivers was the bastard son of a Targaryen king and the Hand of the King, but was punished for the way he dealt with rebels. He was sent to the Wall to become a brother of the Night's Watch and he would eventually become the Lord Commander. In arranging beyond the Wall, he went missing and was presumed dead. It turns out he's been with the- Jojen! Look Jojen, look! Who are you? The First Men called us the Children. But we were born long before them. Come, he waits for you. This may be the last group of children of the forest left in the world. The giant's numbers don't look much better, and in the show, both species have gone extinct. Moving on from areas capable of growing some plant life is a mountain valley called Then. The wildings from here simply call themselves Thens. 
The Thens are the exact opposite in the book as they are in a TV show portrayal. Thens. I fucking hate Thens. I know we've had our differences, Torment. But just one time, before you die, you really ought to try Crow. Instead of being a clan of intimidating cannibals with terrifying faces, they're actually the most civilized of all the wildlings. The Thens follow their leader, who they call the Magnar of Then. Magnar means lord in the old tongue that the first men and the giants used to speak. They're impressive fighters who are far better at working metal than any other primitive wildlings. They are further north than any other clan north of the wall in the mountain range called the Frostfangs. If you guys have seen my video on the north, you heard me talk about the northern mountains, which transitions into the Frostfangs. These mountains separate the haunted forest and the lands of always winter that I'll talk about in a bit. Just west of the Frostfangs is the frozen shore. This coastline was once in control of the Ironborn, but has since been home to some wildlings. The wildlings here are the ones responsible for all the raids that befall Bear Island. West of the wall is the gorge, which is simply a deep gorge. Across the gorge is the Bridge of Skulls, which surprisingly connects both sides of the wall. Instead of climbing up the wall, a lot of wildlings climb down the gorge and back up it to avoid the Night's Watch. Heading back way out east is the peninsula called Storold's Point, and at the tip of it is Hardhome. We saw Hardhome in Game of Thrones during that climactic season 5 scene. Before this place was abandoned, it was the closest thing to a settlement or a town beyond the wall. However, 600 years before the start of the series, something tragic happened that still can't be explained. Every home was in flames to the point where the Night's Watch thought the sun was rising from the north. For months afterwards, ash rained down on the haunted forest and the areas around the destruction. When people went to check out what happened, all that could be found was burnt homes, trees, and bodies. It's too bad since the location was perfect with a natural harbor, sea life to eat, and a ton of wood. Where this bit of lore gets even more mysterious is what people heard in the aftermath. In the cave surrounding Hardhome, horrible screams could be heard deep within the massive cliff over the destroyed town. For centuries, wildlings wouldn't step foot here after what took place, up until recently in the books where a woods witch has convinced thousands to come here and await being rescued by a ship she saw in a vision. None of the strange things that took place 600 years ago can be explained and probably won't be in future books in order to leave it to the reader's imagination. It might have some connection to magic since the lands north of the wall are very different from the rest of Westeros. Magic can still be found here with skin changers being among the wildlings, the white walkers making a return, and the children of the forest sharing their hideout with the three-eyed raven. An item in legends that is said to be somewhere beyond the wall is the Horn of Winter. Long ago, a king beyond the wall named Joramon blew in this horn to supposedly wake giants from the ground. The Horn of Winter is also believed to be able to bring down the wall by blowing into it. Mance Raider bluffed that he had it in his possession, but Tormund Bigmouth later revealed after opening up graves along the milk water, they found nothing. Another place covered in mystery is the Shivering Sea. This vast sea is mostly unexplored and above has northern lights that occur in the sky. There's rumors about ships freezing once they enter a place called Cannibal Bay and become trapped forever. The rumors get even stranger with tales of evil mermaids, ghosts that drag sailors into the water, and mists so cold they freeze ships. Where things take an interesting turn are the tales about dragons. It's said dragons fly over the Shivering Sea and live in the area called the White Waste. North of here, the White Waste is nothing but ice, snow, and mountains with horrible weather conditions. The dragons in these tales are different from the ones under Valyrian control. These ice dragons are said to be far larger than the fire-breathing variant. They are living ice who breathe cold. Like the dragon the Night King took from Daenerys, ice dragons have blue eyes. And the location I saved for last is the land of always winter. Like I said earlier, the mountains called the Frostfangs luckily separate this place from the rest of the lands north of the wall. If the north is supposed to be cold and beyond the wall is colder, the land of always winter is definitely the coldest. It's frozen and permanently locked in winter, but more importantly, this is where the others or white walkers are believed to have come from. But it's also said that children of the forest, giants, and first men have lived here. When Bran has a vision of what is believed to be here, something scares him to the point of tears. The one location I left out is the North Grove. It has some cool mystery behind it, but it's only in the Telltale Game of Thrones game, so I don't think it's connected to the books or the show. I've only read people's opinion on the game, since it's not my style of gameplay, so I don't think I'm even qualified to talk about the North Grove or anything that has to do with the game. The last region I plan to make a video on in this series is Dorne, which will most likely be my next video. If you guys have any requests on a location for these type of videos, you can let me know in the comments. If enough people want it and there's enough written about your requests, I wouldn't mind making more. Thanks for watching guys. Thanks for watching.